Ow. It's happening. Oh my gosh. Hey everyone. I didn't know this would be happening today. <laughs> I just woke up. Oh my god. Where are we? It's the series finale. We got canceled. <laughs> It's a season. Oh, we got canceled. Why are there birds making my bed? Was it my fault this yeah, time? It was all our faults. Okay. I'm blaming and now Eddie I think the most. it was just y'all. Y'all are the drama. Am I the drama? <laughs> I don't no. think I'm the drama. <laughs> maybe, maybe I am the drama. Yeah, Stoney's the drama. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I guess we should start. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Quick, my headphones are gonna fall apart. <laughs> Disintegrating as we speak. <laughs> Get the duct tape. Hi. Thanks for coming. Hey girl. Thanks for coming. Oh grrr. Well, hello America, and thanks for coming. My name is Seth. What's yours? Hello, Jamal is here. Hello, it's Stony. Hey, everyone. Welcome back, back, back again to Thanks for Coming, the most magically gay podcast there ever was and never will be again. This is our uh, final episode. Oh, uh, it is. Oh, my God. It's an end of an era. It really is. Like, we're about to turn four. Unofficially, we're four years old. Yeah, because yeah. I think we started in January, right? Yeah, our first audio came out in January, and then, but we were planning like months before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and podcasting years work like dog years. So, really, we've been podcasting for 24 years. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Retirement. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, well, in this episode, we're just going to kind of discuss various aspects of the podcast and just sort of provide an end uh to an end of an era an end of an era an end of an era shoot the shit kind of key key tea party bitch yeah at the end of this podcast we are sashaying away we forever. are <laughs> <laughs> we may or may not pop up on other shows i'm definitely not speaking for stony but tfc pod she's now going to be tf sleeping beauty yes i probably won't be a regular podcaster again but we'll see i'll never say never <laughs> <laughs> oh like justin bieber oh god <laughs> oh exactly like um yeah <laughs> exactly like justin bieber <laughs> oh my gosh well um i guess you know we, we're kind of like justin bieber because we got famous really quickly and then um now we're done yeah and then everyone tried to deport us back to canada yeah and i'm also <laughs> glad that neither of you inappropriately wore dreadlocks i thought about it one time oh god yeah <laughs> we would have got on the plane just to drag your ass <laughs> I was going to say something like, hello, Mon. Welcome to Thanks for Coming. <laughs> I would put on two N95s, bitch, and beat your ass. Seth was out <laughs> here looking like Adele, like in Jamaica. Oh, with their Basically. benzo nuts or whatever they're called. <laughs> I always a, mess up um, the name of that style. Tom Hanks, son. Chet Hanks style. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Um, Co- oh, uh, COVID God. summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that um allegedly... Never mind. I'm gonna stop myself. Yeah. Then I, yeah. Then I realized uh, that was just a figment of my imagination, and it was all a dream, and it never happened. It was all a dream. I had a dream that one day, my children. <laughs> I feel like it's fair that we quote Martin Luther King in uh in our final episode. Absolutely. Why not? Yeah. Yes. I guess the only equivalent would be like quoting Beyonce or something. <gasps> I'll think of something. <laughs> Are there any poignant Beyonce quotes that would fit our final episode? My brain is kind of fried, so we'll see what happens by the end of the show. Okay. I'll serve something. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's hope it's not stale. <laughs> Make sure your meat and cheese products are refrigerated. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right, let's get let's get into the final podcast. We're just going to kind of talk a little bit. I think we should start 
by like just talking a little bit about the early days of the podcast when we were known as Honest Tea. Ooh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, that's where we got that sound bite. That um, that Honest Tea transition used to be a lot longer. Yes. And we were doing our Googles like good baby podcasters and figured out that there was another show using that name, even though they weren't updating. We are so stupid. Well, <laughs> well we... We had, I think we had the name first, and then they were like Honest Tea with Steven or something like that. That's right. That is right. And so we were like, go fuck yourself, Steven. You're not <laughs> banking off of our name, of our, our fame, because, you know, uh, we were so famous back then. You know, we were out here serving. We were doing yeah. our best, girl. <laughs> and then Steven came along and fucked us over. You know what's weird? Uh, we've actually been podcasting longer than some of the girls have been doing drag on Drag Race. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Pretty strange. Yeah. Things were really crazy back in the day. Um, remember, there was the, the episode where I accidentally recorded with my microphone off the whole time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Was that when we were in Gatlinburg? Yes. That was when we were on that vacation. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because the neighbors could like see into our house and we're like, are they looking at us recording? That was a good one. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Because Seth, you had didn't you have to like go back and like re-record like responses to My just God, uh, like... Jamal and me? Yeah, I felt really bad for fucking it up for everybody because like you guys were on this vacation, so it was already like probably something you were not wanting to do, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who wants to like work on vacation, you know, I'm not like saying anything against the podcast, but, but yeah, I was like, I don't know. Now I just have to stay up and see if I can pull this off so that we don't have to try and record again tomorrow. I mean, that was, you're ridiculous. Like I don't, I probably would have just cried and told y'all in the morning that something happened and the files are gone and we can like postpone it for a week. Because when you listen back to that episode, I wish I knew which one it was because it's seamless like you can't tell unless you know what's going on well the great thing about that one was you probably wouldn't have noticed it had you not actually known that we recorded it before because the funny thing was when seth was like responding to like me sometimes i felt like he was just like oh okay and like just kind of like shading me (laughs) in the responses (laughs) yeah (laughs) so that was my favorite part of that (laughs) I got my second chance to shade you all. (laughs) You did. And it was perfect, like, Seth tone and everything. Like, I promise you, listeners, like, if we have to tweet the episode just so people can listen. I mean, they're going to be looking for it now because they're shadesters, but you can't It was right at the beginning, yeah. It was right at the beginning. We're not going to tell you, and you'll never figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) That was also when we were recording Stoney and I on one microphone, or a blue oh, snowball yeah. like we we're learning all the things about audio and which tools to have it was very plug right into the computer with this mic <laughs> oh yeah i remember this snowball <laughs> oh yeah that was like yeah that was old school for us and you could snowball. hear Reynold a lot better and the snowball <laughs> yeah. you could hear everything a lot better <laughs> it was like it was a good mic um hetero correspondent nick now owns that microphone oh yeah it's still alive so nick can start his own podcast right Ooh, hence, hence. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe now that Maddie Morphosis is on the show, Nick can start his own <laughs> Drag Race podcast. I mean, it's open to everyone. So, <laughs> hey, y'all, this is Nick. I'm here as a straight man to talk to you about RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> over now, get your Bud Lights. Oh no, not Bud Light. Hey now. Want to talk about some homos? <laughs> <laughs> Here come the queers. <laughs> Do you all remember when we could actually go to drag shows and talk about them on the show pre-COVID? Yeah, yes. those were fun days. Yeah, we would like give reviews of our drag shows that we went to. Mm-hmm. That was fun. I miss yeah. that. Like, of course, we can kind of go out safely. Like, not anymore. Omicron's popping off but i haven't been brave enough to go to any of the post-covid drag shows i've tuned into plenty of virtual shows though we definitely went to i don't know i remember us going to like naomi smalls or monique card or something or it Alyssa wouldn't be monique. edwards yeah. oh my gosh yeah, who yeah, else it was, was like there? the old school queens kind of mm-hmm. like 
Who all have we seen while we've been doing the show? Let's chat about that really well, quick. We I remember we saw Kennedy Davenport and Latrice Royale together. Ooh, they tore up Talbot Street in Indy when it was still standing. Yes, we saw them. We saw definitely we saw Thorgy. I, Thorgy in person. <sighs> we did Thorgy. the meet and greet. Yeah, we were obsessed with Thorgy. That was one of those shows where it was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I liked this queen so much until she snatched all the singles out of my pocket. Like, yeah. literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally, she robbed me. She saw me pulling the ones out and she stayed until I gave her like five more. It's like, you know what, bitch, work. Here's a 10. All right. you Yeah, here's a 10. Let's just save us all some time. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. Well, I know we also went to the Battle of the Seasons. Um, yes. It's, uh, that one is like, for me, is hard to remember everyone that was on it. I do remember Ivy Winters, uh, Michelle Violet Massage, Chachki, Michelle. Violet ginger because i remember like becoming more of a fan yeah. of ginger at that show i think that was I at the egyptian Jinx. room i'm getting yeah. somewhat confused though because i know i went to a christmas one too one time yeah because we saw chi chi yeah yeah i did not get to see chi chi unfortunately i don't think i did that was for I my saw birthday Chi-Chi two times because she was also at the um indiana pride, pride. when lizzo performed. pride oh yeah we saw trixie at pride one year Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, Bob the Drag Queen we've seen, Monique Hart, um, Naomi Ms. Smalls. Cracker. Ms. Cracker. That yes. was with Monique. Okay, yeah. Because remember, we were all sitting in the venue, like all the gays and allies are just chilling, and from like the sky, all you hear is, hi, you know, Monique Hart voice, <laughs> high pitch, and just like, I'm here, and the whole room just explodes, and she's just walking into the room to get ready. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we saw Alaska as well. We did see Alaska. That was a fun show. I wish it was longer, but, you know, I understand. It is what it is. I've seen Monet. Oh, we have seen Monet, too. Oh, yeah, we did see her. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, you guys did, too. I'm trying to remember who else I've seen. We saw Monet in her bleeding heart outfit mm-hmm. when she performed Kesha's Praying. That was epic. Oh, I saw Lalo McQueen before. Yes. Ooh, Drag Race Trade. You saw Bosco. Yeah, I saw, didn't know at the time, but I saw Bosco. It's like you have ESPN or something. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I mean, even back then, I was like, this is the one, like the queen that stands out of the local queens. So, yeah, I was like, there you go. Yeah, it came. It finally came to be. <laughs> yeah, we've seen lots of great shows. Yeah, I'm really glad we got to do that, especially because we're not drag queens. We saw Katya at Battle of the Seasons, too. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. We did. See I remember the queen. she did a monologue. Mm-hmm. That we battle saw. of the seasons we went to was epic because it was like there I'm was like, sure, like queens. Ben was there. Like, oh yeah, Ben De- De La Creme was definitely there. There were like eight of them and Michelle. Yeah, Michelle sang live. That was pretty cool. She was actually good. Yeah, I saw Robbie Turner. That was like. <laughs> Oh God! In your Uber, <laughs> beep, and, uh, beep. This is this before Robbie fell from grace. Uh, he was the host at at one of the bars uh, that I the gay bars in in Seattle. <laughs> you might hear us talk about it on an older episode. I don't know, poor Robbie Turner. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Girl. I mean, he's still alive, but <laughs> I, well, I mean, I would assume he is still alive. You know. Yeah, we've seen lots of cool shows. Uh, what are some What are some standout episodes of our podcast? You know, I don't know if people like understand our friendship. Like, I've known Seth since fall of two thousand five, so we go way back. Marching band, Kappa Kappa Psi, band fraternity, full bandies. That's how we met. And I don't know when I think back to just how we hang out, how we used to hang out. It was usually at someone's apartment or house, watching movies, drinking wine, playing games, drinking wine, (laughs) the occasional video game, occasional. But all that to say, I really like our brunch episode because we're just hanging out in the kitchen. The mic is just hanging out in the kitchen, just picking up all of the sounds and we're just being our goofy selves. And I feel like (laughs) if you go back and listen to that episode, listeners, like that's what it is when we're all in the same room. There's usually good snacks chill vibes and just relax like we just it's yeah. easy to hang out with each other so i do miss that that is a good episode i love that you can hear like the bacon sizzling and then oh, yeah. there's definitely some good asmr moments oh, in yeah. That yeah. podcast 
that fabulous small kitchen. It worked as a great brunch studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, for me, I would say one of my favorite episodes was when I came to visit and made you all watch Call Me By Your Name, and then we did a podcast about it. Oh no. I actually really enjoyed that movie, so I'm glad we got to do that, and I got to experience that with you, because I know you're such a fan. Yeah. That was always fun, like, when we did the, like in-person ones because well like since COVID happened we haven't got to do any in-person ones but I always enjoyed like when you visited we had multiple podcasts like Mm -hmm. we had some in the Las Vegas um oh yeah for the Lady Gaga show that was really fun too like recapping all of that yes remember Um, when we did the Harry Potter bean taste test or whatever I was just about to say that shit that grass ass jelly bean was so fucking gross (laughs) the dog food one what I will never forget or toothpaste uh uh (laughs) yeah hell no those Those were so fun. fun Yeah, I like those episodes a lot. I thought it would be interesting to talk about what you feel like you've learned or if you feel like you've learned anything from doing podcasting. Oh my gosh, should I go first? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes, bitch. I am a natural busy bee. I am great in chaos. Controlled chaos is what I tell people at work or elsewhere. I can have multiple projects and things going on. What podcasting has taught me... I've even learned this lesson like recently, like you have to, I'd say within like the last year, you have to take breaks. I've been such a programmed person since I was a kid, school, music and otherwise. So when we decided to do a podcast, I was like, that's it. We're going to set the schedule when we have to record or record when I start started to help editing because in the beginning, Seth was the only one with the editing skills. So we had a couple little workshops <laughs> offline so he could teach <laughs> me those things. But you have to give yourself time. Like it was around real estate school, actually. Like I've never actually really talked about this, but it took me like way longer than it should have to get through real estate school just because I was so busy. My job was super stressful at the time. I was a supervisor at a call center that I did not have a lot of support at, and I was just exhausted. So having now, flash forward, gotten through real estate school, I'm starting to get really busy out here in these real estate streets. And it's bittersweet because I am going to miss doing the show, but I am excited to have more time to rest so I can improve other parts of my life, like my health and my new career. So time management, it's not always healthy to just push forward. You have to take those breaks. Manage yourself. Fun. That's what I've learned. (laughs) For me, like as far as what I learned, like I guess other than like the technical details, like like I didn't do any editing this entire time. (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) How did you manage to do that? That's, That's not fair. Like, I was just like Britney Spears. I just walked up and pressed play and then walked away. (laughs) Oh, you know what? The other interesting part that's kind of like related to this point is that when we first started the show, like there was not like one main host. We would like rotate weeks where a different person was the main host. Mm -hmm. We were trying on all the shoes, like finding our footing and seeing what felt natural. and And we realized like Seth was the best host and yeah like i don't know seth is just really good at it so i like suck at it because i'm just like what's going on (laughs) i know and like i can um i feel like it's something i i could do but seth was just like a natural at it and i wasn't trying to step on any toes i was there to help wherever (laughs) i could okay (laughs) that's because i am what neurotic (laughs) (laughs) and that's on period honey (laughs) <laughs> sorry I to mean, interrupt you stony but no yeah. no that was a good a good point i forgot that we did that because anytime that seth wasn't on the podcast and like i had to do it like i hated doing it so much because <laughs> it was just like uh like even this i think it was like a couple episodes ago and we had nick on it and i had to be the host like it was terrible like i was just like <laughs> i fucking hate this <laughs> It, those episodes were always so funny because you're like, is that what I'm supposed to say? Or... <laughs> I know. Stoney's like corporate takes over. He's like, because when Seth is gone and say it's just us or a guest, he will kind of quietly take over. 
and I will let him do it. And he's just mm-hmm. like, I say corporate because he's like, okay, let's go. Is this what we're doing? Okay. I am really bad because <laughs> it's like I'm on a call. I'm like, okay, let's walk through the PowerPoint yeah. presentation. <laughs> yeah. Up at the top, we have Bury that. our revenue number. And then below that is COGS. Like, just like, what the fuck? Very that. <laughs> oh, I think that's sort of like uh, um something that I learned from doing the podcast is learning to... Um, kind of learn like how to um, continue the conversation or like how to keep the conversation moving and like Mm -hmm. I guess you could say quote-unquote like hosting like so I feel like I could you know if the opportunity opportunity presented itself to do like some sort of like hosting gig like at a drag show or something like that yes it's I mean podcasting is a lot of fun but I mean, we've been doing this for four years. If you have a podcast, this is something you can put on your resume. Like, we've gained all these skills. These are marketable skills. And you're absolutely right. Because I I had the same idea. At one point, we were trying to get a table at Pride. And then COVID happens. Like, I'm the people person. I was ready to be, like, out there trying to get those bar gigs um, like Seth. But it did not happen. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but um but also too like i think that i learned how to like speak better and like get my thoughts across more clearly because oh, yeah. i just like i feel like um i just kind of rambled a lot before even more than you hear on the podcast <laughs> oh yeah also like talking over each other like it still happens sometimes but we got really good at learning to cut ourselves off or like wait when the other person was talking yeah, and sometimes it's just like to the technology gets in the way and you're like, wait, is that person frozen? <laughs> right. Oh yeah. We always had IT issues. Oh my gosh. It would not be I mean, my headphones are hanging by a thread as we record this. Like it would not be an episode of TFC without <laughs> a technical drama. So I won't say any names, but do you remember when we recorded that one podcast with the guest and the guest didn't press record and we just like scrapped the entire oh, yeah. podcast? <laughs> That was fun. Well, didn't well, didn't we have to, we did it again just us without the guest, right? Yeah, yeah without the guest. But it, I just remember like us like texting about I remember being in bed at night and being like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> because I think you texted like we have to redo this. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that person. <laughs> what about what about the other person that they wanted to be a guest on our show? And then, like, a few months after we let them be a guest on our show, they just, like, unfriended us on Twitter and stopped talking to us. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. We, and then, you know, that's the only episode that we've ever deleted. <laughs> yeah, that was tacky as fuck. I hope you're listening, bastard. Yeah. They wanted to be, like, in the po- in the Guinness Book of Hall of Fame or whatever it's called, j- being, like, on the most podcasts in one year. Mm-hmm. Which uh, I thought was cool, but I guess we deleted I, you, bitch. Yeah, we did. He delete was really you. friendly for a long ass time. He so was before we ever let him do it, and then I was like, "All right, like he seems like he's sticking around. Like let's you know let this guy do it." And then he just like ghosted us, and I was like, "All right, well we're deleting your episode. <laughs> Bye." <laughs> <laughs> like we're not above that, girl. We're petty ass bitches. <laughs> I know. I hope you submit your little paperwork for that book before we hit delete bitch yeah girl <laughs> i hope they didn't <laughs> i hope they didn't even beat it at, in general you're one podcast short <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry bitch <laughs> yeah well speaking of, i guess speaking about guests we've had a lot of guests where we had a lot better experiences mm-hmm. i think uh i'm trying to think of all the guests that we've had we had um, well, Neek from Black Girls Neek. Do Stuff. Mm-hmm. KT. We had, we had that one foodie blogger that we don't yeah. talk to anymore. I know. And followed. Like, actually, I just recently did because I realized I was following. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were a little too horny on our episode anyway. So yeah. I wasn't. It was a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I hope he's gotten laid since then. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I'm trying to think of who. I, oh, we had um, we had Holly on the show. Yeah. Yes, OG listeners. Like that's also a favorite we part had. of the show. Like when we get listeners on the show, that's yeah. fun for us. Well, yeah. We had also uh, Will. Obviously, Will. Oh, of had, course, many times. Yeah. Two time designer of our logo. Yeah, he designed. Uh, they designed they. all of our podcast logos, mm-hmm. and. Um, 
what else did they have they done oh they designed my trouble trouble podcast logo too when i was doing that yes and i just like their energy too because whenever they're on the show um lots of energy lots of questions that we wouldn't have come up with just because giving that listener perspective they're just watching the show as fans they're not watching it and studying it like we are maybe they are but i like that they always brought questions that we didn't have in our notes yes girl and we we had a couple really fun uk guest hosts we had beth and um Sophie. Sophie. Sophie, sorry, my brain's s- close to stopping working for the day. <laughs> Sickening makeup. Um, Sophie, congrats on your online success. And congrats to Beth, who's expecting yes. with her new husband. Is, is Sophie still Sophie Serves Face? If you guys want to follow her, she on Instagram or uh, Twitter, it's Sophie Serves Face. Beth, I, I don't, is not like really. Well, she influenced me, but um, <laughs> she's just she's having a baby almost now. Yeah, like I love all the UK people. Like I just love like all their tweets. Just yeah. like Dean, Sophie, Beth. I think those are the main like follow. Yeah, and I know there's others, but I'm trying to think of everyone's names. Mm-hmm. There's also Nick, yeah. of course, hetero correspondent, and um, correspondents from other franchises of Drag Race that have popped on the show a couple of times here and there definitely yeah we've had a lot of great guests and and a lot of great friends i mean just from doing the podcast like in all sorts of places like uh uk uh germany australia Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm trying to think where else canada canada i was um kind of helping a podcaster in Nigeria get their show up and going. Oh, it was yeah. a queer show. I helped them for a little bit. I wasn't on the show. It's just a little complicated <laughs> with queer culture and things over there. So yeah, had to be careful. But I provided education. That was fun. Kind of becoming a ment a mentor. Kind of yeah. some people. <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't know what you yeah, want my knowledge for. Times. They were good times. <laughs> I mean, we even had like personal friends that we know in real life, like Ebeth. Um, she was on the Gaga show. Uh, Nick, obviously. Uh, oh, that I think... one girl I'm not friends with anymore. <laughs> that crazy heifer. I don't, I don't know who we're talking Hi, about. You know who you are. It's fine. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Megan showed up one time, I think, for. That I think was it was the like... Miss Cracker Monique show. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just been fun to include everyone. I feel like we've tried to make this podcast like a community. And it's been mm-hmm. really awesome to get to know so many of you. And, um, and and hopefully we can continue to get to know more of you. I mean, even though we'll not be podcasting, we'll still be watching and happy to discuss Drag Race. And, you know, we'll share our personal Twitters or Instagrams or whatever on um, on social media when this is episodes out. So if you're interested, you can follow us, but no pressure if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, and also, that's absolutely right. There's a few places I'm willing to get on a plane to go see people. The Queer Creative, Nick, Neek from Neek, Black Girls yeah, Do definitely. Stuff. Um, drunk Dish. I just want to go drink with them, honestly. Friday. Friday's fun. Um, we missed our chance to meet up with them in Bloomington because we were in the middle of buying this house, but maybe next time. Rude. Now we have to go to Ireland, so <laughs> honestly, oh, win-win. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. We even, we got, we uh, did a Manscaped sponsorship. We did a, we we were sponsored by Poopery. Mm-hmm. Yes. We had Aja on the show. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a highlight of of our whole podcasting experience, being able to sit down. And I think we were on a call with Aja for like four hours or something. Like three or four hours. It was at least three hours. And the whole thing came about because both of us were being messy. And it ended in a listening party. The cool thing was Aja was like so sweet. And like actually, you know, like I figured like Aja would just be like, oh, like I got to get off this shit Mm because like I don't want to talk to these people. But like Aja actually talked to us for a long time. It was a long time. And wanted to like talk more and like even played the album before it was even out. They were going to play two songs for us and we ended up hearing the whole project. Yeah, that was Before really fun. Uh, such a fun night. I wish mm-hmm. more of the queens, were, <laughs> we had experiences with more of the queens like that. But I mean, I understand like everyone's busy too. And, um, yeah. you know, people, when they 
you know, they when they have their free time, they want their free time, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Understandable. What other? Oh, we were featured in Cosmopolitan Magazine. <gasps> yes. That was huge. Hannah like, Chambers, I think. Wow. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Hannah Chambers for recognizing us. Definitely. That was a really cool moment. I think that, I think the title of the, uh, article was seven shadiest tea spilling podcasts <laughs> or something like that. The hottest tea spilling podcast. Yeah, like and... if you Google RuPaul's Drag Race podcast, like it's that article pops up like at, near the top. I have a bookmark. I'll tweet like, it. Like it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty cool. Like, I had no idea that even happened. And one of my friends was up late and I got, I couldn't sleep. I got like a late message on Snapchat and they're like, have you seen this? I thought it was spam. I was like, that's a joke. <laughs> He's like, no, that's their like, that's them. He's like, oh my God, <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, we were freaking out that day. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was cool. And then we even got like people donating to us. Like, we haven't gotten it. I don't think we've gotten a chance to thank Andrew. Well, I think it's from Andrew and Maddie from uh, Fright Game 13. Mm-hmm. And um, Jeremy B. I don't want, want to necessarily call people out yeah. by their full, yeah. by their uh, government, names. government name. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Like, of course, when we started, and we didn't do any of that right away, we didn't want to put anything around behind a paywall. We didn't want to do the venmo or anything like that so we appreciate the tips that we've received from everyone a lot thank you so much we also opened a merch shop which is cool yeah we had merch shop and people actually bought things from it yeah yeah i have just us (laughs) that weren't just us i have to shout out leslie and brian too of course longtime friends from college and old goodwill co-worker leslie they tipped us a few times we still have kesha the pumpkin i can't wait to reconnect with them in person one day like that's gonna happen so thank you sis and brian they're good people (laughs) for sure oh we almost we almost got uh served but we definitely got into beef with a judge of drag race oh girl like okay (laughs) i'm I'm just going to say some things here and take it how you will. Okay. That was bullshit. All of that was crazy. (laughs) And there was some stuff going on behind the scenes. And I really don't like how some people like immediately disconnected from us. I thought it was very like unprofessional and weird, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. The season played out to the fans how it played out. So there's that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it. I I haven't watched it. I watched the first episode, and then after all that drama, I was like, girl, I'm out of here. But, but yeah, that was a crazy day. Just, like, people hating us in a language that I couldn't even necessarily understand. Right, and just my, like, PR background, just from every angle, whether it was, like, um, we'll say colleagues, for lack of a better term, and, like, the fans going crazy on you that day, like... There's just so many things that could have been handled better and people showing that they're not really professionals or deserve to be judges of a show. But, you know, all that mess came out. And I'm just glad that we came through it because one of the things, one of the many things I'm proud of for us is keeping a level head on the show online for the most part and staying out of that mess. Like we know how to conduct ourselves and we know how to treat people whether you're going through something or or not <laughs> we know how to treat you as a human being and as a professional part of me wishes like i could have i like encouraged the drama a little bit more to try and like make more of the situation but at the same time like crazy is crazy so it's probably better that i did not yeah, yeah. definitely better to walk away i've learned that over the years <laughs> yes girl what else we got a lot of like like a cool interactions with the queens on Twitter. I remember like Shay interacted with us a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Shay followed us. Yeah. And like we have queens that follow the Twitter now. So that's cool. That is cool. We've been seen. (laughs) Um, One thing speaking about the queens, I'm really proud of kind of our growth on the show and as it relates to queerness in the community, because just being more inclusive and trying to make sure we're getting people's pronouns right, correcting things that we see online from others, just sharing that education as a community like Seth was talking about. I And even with like examples like the Vixen and just like race relations and how to have those discussions and other queens as well, just what has happened on Drag Race. I'm happy about the discussions we've had 
because a lot of those we've come back to and revisit the conversation if we felt differently about it. A lot of shows don't do that. They just put it out there and that's it. Yeah, and, and we'll tell you when we're wrong. For we sure. sure will. Absolutely. I mean, I think I'll apologize. We definitely like came onto like the Drag Race podcast scene at a very interesting time. Like, I feel like we came on right when the show, just right before the show, like exploded into what it is now. Mm-hmm. Like, it was obviously getting very popular because I think we started what season nine or something. All Stars three. All, All Stars, Stars three. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it was obviously getting more popular then but it had not like reached its ultimate just like craziness that it is now we had scheduled breaks and off-season episodes right and then we had to like sort of um work into new schedules and new formats and stuff as the show changed because they started adding so many international seasons and having so many seasons on on air at the same time yeah we were not trying to leave anybody out um not trying to put anything behind a paywall especially if it was being presented from a country that wasn't ours. So we tried to be as flexible as we could. And I think we did a pretty good job. Definitely. I I really enjoyed the international seasons and getting to meet people, um, you know, in that, from that area and things like that, making friends with people. Oh yeah. That was a lot of fun. Very fun. I did want to say, so we kind of like talked about our favorite episodes earlier, but I wanted to mention this specifically because I love like when we do like our one-off episodes that are just like we have an idea and we do it my favorite one of my favorite episodes that we did was the Karen episode (laughs) I fucking love the rise of the Karens yes (laughs) it was we had a whole like a marketing uh slogan (laughs) thing on Twitter for it like a video like the actual like Karen episode itself was amazing we had clips of the Karens acting crazy and COVID had just started so we were still all in a good mood Um, (laughs) so I don't know it was just it was a good time I I love that episode that was a good episode yeah that was a fun one the Karens (laughs) final boss Karen I love those sound effects I had too much fun with those sound effects that episode (laughs) yeah girl yeah we had a lot of fun we did a lot we've accomplished a lot I, I mean, I per, I feel very proud of what we've accomplished as an indie podcast. I do, too. I was um never expecting it to explode by any means, but I still think that we've won in a lot of ways. We've gained so much, so I'm very proud of us as well. Yeah, and I think we did a good job. Like, people always say, like, when you start a podcast, like, a lot of podcasts don't make it to, like, 100 episodes. I mean, we made it to 250. We covered every fucking season Mm -hmm. and every episode for four years. That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, definitely. With full-time jobs. I technically have two jobs. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. With full-time jobs, we were able to still be consistent, put out uh, content that was continually better in quality. Yeah. I don't know. We did did a lot. You know, we were recognized in um, print. We were we worked with uh, sponsors. We we checked a lot of the podcast boxes. Yeah, so I I feel good, and it's like you know I, as much as I think I think we all wish that we could continue the podcast, but it's just like it's it's just such a time commitment, especially now with all the seasons. Like because I would feel like I'm like I'm leaving people out if we didn't cover all of the seasons, right? And also. You know how we feel about production most of the time. So we're just not trying to bring down everyone's energy. So it's a good time to kind of step back and see what the show does and still enjoy it as fans. Yeah, absolutely. Another question that I get a lot is, are we still going to be friends and talk after (laughs) the podcast is over? (laughs) I mean, yeah. (laughs) Do we need to do Maybe. a house party, group FaceTime? Oh, wait. Sony has an Android. Um, um, <laughs> Zoom. No, we used to hang out all the time, especially when we lived in the same city. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if we still had like a weekly call, except you all just won't hear what's going on. <laughs> LOL. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely like there's definitely no like... Uh, break up here where we're like fighting or anything it's not anything to do with that so it's literally we need like to sleep time to break up 
Bye bye. Oh, let's hit the Corey out. I'll see you in the next live. (laughs) (laughs) No, Uh, it's nothing like that. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll still talk a lot. We'll text a lot. I'm sure you'll see us interacting on social media a lot. And uh, yeah, there's no bad blood, no falling out, uh, no weirdness. Um, Yeah, everything's fine. We're just tired of the podcast. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we just need a break. (laughs) Seth was telling us that some of y'all asked if we were still going to like talk. I'm like, well, yeah, (laughs) we've been friends since like 2005. We'll definitely still be texting about Drag Race. (laughs) Oh, the group text is lit every day. We're just not. I'm, I'm looking forward to just like watching Drag Race as a fan and not somebody that has to like talk about it every week definitely just getting to actually and maybe we'll enjoy it more that way i think i will Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah (laughs) definitely it's definitely been a fun ride it has been a fun ride and it it was weird just like leading up to today being like this is the last this is it it's over i know he's looking at these poor headphones that i've had now for like six or seven years and i'm like oh no i can lay them to rest tonight because they've been hanging on for dear life this whole time (laughs) i love these headphones that's why i keep talking about them i'm sad definitely i guess maybe shout out a couple of our podcast friends before we bounce oh you know i think some of like the of our close circle a lot of the people that we like We'll probably, you know, still stay in touch with our people like Black Girls Do Stuff Too, For Your Reference Podcast, uh, Thanks I Hate It, mm-hmm. Friday, Friday 13. the 13th, I'm trying to think, oh, um, Once drunk Upon a dish, Nightmare, Once Upon a Nightmare, Love the Drunk Dish Girls, they were really fun to uh, be on a creative. podcast with. Yeah, Drunk yeah. Dish was a lot of fun, and uh, the Queer Creative. Queer Creative. I got to be silly with them, that was fun. They were fun. Um, I'm trying to think who else. That was on TFC. Uh, well, just podcast in general I mean, that needs supported us a lot. That she's not doing. Oh that. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was f- fun. <laughs> Sorry, I just punched my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's so many because I feel like one thing that we see online as podcasters is a lot of fake interaction. Um, oh, yeah. Especially on Twitter. So I'm like going through the list in my head of like people I actually interact with. Um, Nikki needs an adult. I, I definitely want to stay in touch with Lost Spaces. I haven't listened oh, yeah. to their podcast, but now that I'll have more free time, I want to start. And um, also for nerds by nerds, I really liked mm-hmm. them their podcast, and it was fun to go on a po- on their podcast yeah um and humans and stars shout out to them they were really sweet and checked up on me after my friend passed in november of covid they were um checking on me alongside with uh thanks i hate it um also gosh i'm just like going through the list of these podcasts and i'm like who is it there's so many because i try to listen and be genuine getting back to like the fake interactions like i try to listen to all these shows and tune in but um gosh there's been so much support beyond the rainbow podcast yes i love that's like one of the main like friends that i have made cj from uh that uh beyond the rainbow oh, is yeah. such an amazing like person like she's been like almost like a mentor to me as well mm-hmm. and um and Paige too at um absolutely true crime true crime yeah I, reverie uh, reverie true crime pod. reverie true crime yeah sorry <laughs> I'm trying to get all these podcast names right. I, Pitney I, and Amelia, Spitch and Pitney Boutique. And Amelia. <laughs> yes, we had uh, Lindsay over at Ye Old Crime Podcast, who was a real delight. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know if we left out your podcast. Trust me, I it's just because I'm tired, and uh, well, <laughs> I think we're all tired. I I've been awake since 5:30 this morning, and I've done a lot today. <laughs> but if we haven't mentioned your podcast and you've interacted with us and you've had a good time interacting with us, a film rage they they also interact with us a lot you know it's nothing personal at all like we love you all and we still want to be friends with you all but we're just we're just trying to remember off the top of our head and it's a lot yeah yeah shout outs to you you know who you are help us we're old (laughs) yes yes girl actually i met one of our you know quote unquote fans in real uh, life one time ornacia lopez yeah ornacia lopez ornacia. yes i was so jealous that wasn't fair y'all sent us that selfie i was like upset about it but also happy 
<laughs> yeah, that was a really fun time. Like, I wish I had more time to hang out with uh, with Ornacia. Uh We have like we just I just you know went on my lunch break to go hang out with uh, Ornacia and we had a fun time and a fun chit chat. And it's just like one of those friendships where it just feels like natural from the start. Like at least for me, I didn't feel awkward meeting him at all. So, Good. Um, and we still talk to this day, and you know, every now and then, and and yeah, hopefully we'll get to hang out again. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Should we talk? I want to hang out with. I want to hang out with Dean from the UK. Oh yeah, I want to hang out with Dean as well. I've had the most, <laughs> the most fun talking to Dean about Drag Race and life in general and Monoskin. <laughs> yeah, Dean's been great to talk to. I've really enjoyed talking and getting to know Beth a lot too. I don't know. There's just been so many great people that we've gotten to meet and and uh, podcast with or just be friends with. And I think that's really what I enjoy the most. You know, I think as far, you know, just especially for me, like the whole point of the podcast was for, for me was to, you know, just have a community and to make everyone feel included Mm -hmm. and to respect everybody. And so, you know, if we could affect one person's life and make it better in some sort of way, then like to me, we did anything. We did what we needed to do. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. And thank you all for listening this whole time because being able to talk about um, issues in our respective communities, whether it be queerness or race or otherwise, it's been nice to kind of grow with you all and be able to have those discussions and use our platform for the greater good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that that was another thing is just to have, you know, what small platform we had to talk about trans rights was really important to me. Yes. Yeah. And so I also tried to take that, you know, when I was guest on other podcasts to try and get it to the the heterosexual audience, (laughs) but... Oh, sure. We do what we can. We do what we can. We can only do so much, but I feel like we can say we gave it an honest go and it's nothing that's going to stop because the podcast is ending like right right i'll still be tweeting about it trust me this work is ongoing (laughs) yes girl should we tell the people what we're going to be up to next like after the podcast Hmm. i mean we're probably just going to be working Mm. (laughs) i don't know just like existing i don't know well fine i'll say it i have a real estate podcast now (laughs) Damn, girl. You're trying I'm to like, promote shit? Oh, she shit? wanted the plug. Okay. Well, we're getting, we're getting towards the end. I'm trying to make it feel natural. Look at these podcast skills coming in. I'm doing the wrap-up. You selfish bitch. Well, no. Like, we're excited for a break. And, like, my real estate show, Roots and the City podcast, um, it's, like, 10 to 15 minutes every Friday. It's super short and sweet. And I'm taking all of these TFC skills over to that show. And it's been very easy the whole process now having this experience so that's probably what i'll be up to you'll still see me at gaze in the life um probably more so at jamal the broker online but it's about to be hustle game but also rest game <laughs> Fun. Um, I, don't know, I, I was thinking about reviving trouble trouble but i honestly need a break before that can even happen mm-hmm. so you never know maybe i'll come back with my solo podcast we'll see there you go yeah i'm not like I'm looking forward to just like kind of focusing on like getting back to healthy again and just kind of like trying to do like productive things to make my life better um, on that extra time that I'll have on the weekend. So I think that'll be good. I mean, you can follow me, I think, hot cheese, please on Twitter. I don't really do much on there other than retweet and like things. (laughs) Occasionally I'll reply to people, but yeah, so there you go. We'll have time yeah. to decorate this damn house now. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. I'm going to be moving into a new flat. That's exciting. Woo! That's what I'll be doing after the podcast. Um, if you want to find me on Twitter, you can find me at Homo Seth you all. <laughs> You're always so good it. at coming up with the <laughs> handles. <laughs> Uh, well, well, and and I think we'll pro- we'll post all of the handles and stuff on Twitter. I think maybe we'll just like pin it since we won't have like new episodes and stuff. I think we can just pin that. So it's like if you want to find us here, where we are, like well, it's like a bread trail basically. It's like a national treasure. Ooh, that's a yeah. good idea. Yes, girl. Very cool. It's like I don't want the podcast to end, but I feel like we've <laughs> talked about everything. <laughs> I know. What else is there to say? I guess you all have 250 episodes to go listen to. (laughs) 
<laughs> if you haven't already, you if can you listen to them already. again. Yeah, listen to all of them. Except the one we deleted. Don't listen to them. If for well, some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. If um <laughs> if for some reason the podcast explodes during our like absence, then maybe we'll be summoned back to the mics, but I have a feeling it won't be drag race. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do have like tentative plans and ideas for another podcast, but it I mean we're not promising anything, so right. don't get like your hopes up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't hold your breath. We'll come back as <laughs> if we were to come back, it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah, it, and it'll be like on our own schedule, not RuPaul's. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, I guess maybe one last question would be: Are you still a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, and do you think you'll continue to watch the show? You know, just after having covered so many seasons, um, you know, all that sort of thing. Like, in, and and the way it ended with us being kind of like kind of a contentious relationship with the show. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we'll still watch for sure. I mean, as we're recording, we're avoiding Twitter because the premiere of season 14 is on, but I feel like we'll probably let episodes stack up and just watch it more at a leisurely pace because we've been forced to watch the episode like twice a week <laughs> before yeah. we record. So um, we're going to take it a little easy, but I think we will still absolutely be caught up in watching. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely still a fan and I plan on watching. It's just now it's going to be more enjoyable because I don't have to watch it twice or like watch like 20 recap videos and then talk about it. Like, I just feel like I'll, it'll be more relaxing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If- if there's like some bullshit messy stuff going on then we can just tune it out we don't, <laughs> yeah. have, to, we don't have to talk about it again like on a podcast for an hour <laughs> that's right and also i'll still probably live tweet i like to live tweet when i'm listening to podcasts or watching tv shows so you might see some of that i might hop on the tfc pod i'll sign it as jamal so you know it's me on twitter but <laughs> yeah i, I mean, enjoy live tweeting because i like kind of reacting with the audience and it's like oh, if yeah. the season sucks we can just like i can watch it later like drag race down under i definitely would have like just binged watch that and been on my phone the whole time in like two days yeah <laughs> just yeah. get it over with real quick <laughs> let's see that crown rue <laughs> i might do that to italy <laughs> yeah i'm taking my time getting to that one yeah uh very cool well i think we've arrived to the very end the series finale of things for coming rupaul's drag race podcast it's been a lot of fun um i just wanted to you know thank jamal and stoney for all the good times that we had and it's been a lot of fun yeah thank you both for showing up to the gig yeah thank you couldn't have done it without you (laughs) yeah thanks for coming Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess this is our last one. We love you all. There will be no podcast next week. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but until never. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, losers. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get one of the more of those. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> yes hey friends first of all holy crap the end of an era i am so proud of you all for such an epic run of a podcast i cannot thank you all enough for the opportunities you have given me over the years getting to work with you on podcast logos has been such a highlight for my career I used your rainbow logo for this show in my portfolio, which helped me get my current graphic design job. Uh, I've followed your podcast since I was in college, which for everyone else listening was pre-pandemic, so it's been a while now. Uh, You all have been a part of my life through young adulthood, through all sorts of life changes, and through me really finding my way in life. I mean, I even realized I was non-binary over the course of your show. I am so grateful to have looked up to you all throughout that time. Whew, okay. Uh, I'm gonna get kind of emotional here, so I'll try to keep this short and cut it off for now. But seriously, thank you all so much for your time and efforts with this show, and for the other podcasts you've worked on as well. There are so many people whose lives you've impacted throughout your work on this program, 
and all of us cannot wait to see what comes next. Hey friends, and thanks for coming lovers. It's the For Your Reference podcast with Katie and Doty. It's the residential straights. Um, we know it can be very controversial to allow the straights in a queer space, but we do want to give a very, very quick love, thanks and splooshes to Stoney, Jamal and Seth. OT is our residential Stoney. Mm. Um, and we absolutely love you guys. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of your journey. Thank you for personally allowing me to talk about the thunderstorm that was down under. Thank you for coming on to our podcast and talking about Edge of 17, you know, sharing a lot of your stories and 250 episodes, OT. We can only dream. And guess what, OT? Mm. In honor of TFC 2050, I am debuting my drag name. Oh, what is it? Phil Ratio. <laughs> you want to try that three times for those listening? Phil Ratio, Phil Ratio, Phil Ratio. <laughs> Tasty. Uh. We can only dream not to be as beautifully amazing, brilliant, wonderful Lady Gaga reference talented, um, but we hope to get there very soon. And I know because you are all so amazing, we will love to see um, your projects outside of Thanks for Coming. And I also look forward to checking out your back catalog as well thank you so much we fucking love you love you mate Mwah. hi it's Brittany in windsor thanks i hate it it is thanks for coming's last episode um honestly i give you guys all <laughs> the kudos in the <laughs> that's, that's what the she... gag. <laughs> <laughs> anyway Anyway, we have to really give it up to these guys because there's been a lot of fucking drag race in these last few years. Like I oh gave up on God. it a year ago. I can't even imagine how y'all still doing it. But we appreciate you for doing yeah. the work and for watching the episodes because honestly, even when I couldn't watch the episodes, I, I listened to the episodes in my car. Exactly. Period. And I'd be in my 100%. car. 100%. And we wish you guys all the best of luck in your future endeavors. We do hope that you come back in another podcast at some point in time. Uh, you guys have a great chemistry. We hope you guys live your best lives. And when y'all finally get out to New York, if Call we're going to get Brittany up here and we're going to have a good old time, we're going to go down to the boil, you know, and remember Jamal. 36 is your ball headed. Good luck, guys. We love you.